Hey guys, this is Mount Juliet Library. My name is Miss LaTerza and what we're going to do today is we're going to finish up that series that we've been doing about earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanoes. Now, as I teach this lesson, today is September 25th of 2020. Your Tennessee Titans are doing better than my New York Jets. How do I know? Simple. We compare them. The Titans right now with two wins, zero losses, whereas the Jets are zero wins, Two losses, I can tell you it's just going to get worse as the season goes on. Now, why do I mention that? Well, because in the wonderful world of geology, we do similar things. What we need to do is we need to compare the severity of earthquakes. And instead of a one loss record like we do in sports, geologists have developed different types of scales. Going all the way back to the year 1884, a man named Giuseppe Mercalli developed something called the Mercalli scale. The Mercalli scale is set up as a range from 1 to 12, and the numbers, as the numbers go higher and higher, the severity of the damage gets worse and worse. Problem is, all of that is based upon observation. One person's observations may differ from another person's, and you know what? Sometimes people actually lie about what happens. So as a result of that, if the observations are not very good, or if somebody is deliberately lying, then what's going to happen is the numbers are going to be skewed. So in place of that, in 1935, a man named Charles Richter developed the Richter scale. The Richter scale was based upon something much more scientific, and the range on that is going to go from 1 to 10. What Charles Richter did is they used a seismograph. A seismograph is going to create a seismogram, which is just simply going to be the measurement and the reading of the damage being created by the earthquake activity. Now, it has a scale of 1 to 10, and as we go from 1 to 10, the amount of damage or the magnitude of the damage is going to be multiplied by a factor of 10. And the reason why there's going to be more damage is because as we go number by number, the amount of energy that's being released is going to be increased by a factor of 30. Actually, it's 32, but don't go losing sleep over that. So as a result of that, when we want to compare things on the Richter scale, let's start over here talking about the amount of damage, okay? As we go from a 3 to a 7, the amount of damage is going to be increased by a factor of 10 as we go from number to number. Be careful. Don't just think, well, as we're going from a 3 to a 4, 5, 6, or 7, we're increasing by 4. Uh, 4 times 10 is 40. No, it doesn't work like that. As we go from number to number, we multiply by a factor of 10. So as we go from a 3 to a 4, there's 10 times as much damage. Then as we go to the 5, we've got to multiply, not add. So that means it's going to be 100 times as much damage. To a 6, 1,000 times as much damage. So finally you get to a 7. The amount of damage is going to be 10,000 times worse than we had over there at a 3. And why? Well, that's because as we go from number to number, the amount of energy being released is going to be multiplied by a factor of 30. So that means we start over there at a 3, we go to a 4, 30 times as much damage is going to be created as a result, uh, 30 times as much energy is going to be released by that particular earthquake activity. Then when we go to a 5, we multiply by 30 again. That means there's 900 times as much energy. Multiply by 30 again at a 6. We're at 27,000 until finally we get to a 7. 810,000 times more energy is being released at a 7 than we had over there at a 3. Now let's just get some simple terminology out of the way. Definition of an earthquake is anytime there's movement of the Earth's crust. The epicenter is going to be the area on the surface of planet Earth where you actually feel the earthquake itself. But the focus is going to be the area between the plates where the earthquake is going to start by the movement of the plates. And finally, seismic waves is going to be the amount of energy that's being released by that earthquake activity. And this is going to lead me to something that to a lot of people it isn't going to make a whole lot of sense. And that's simply this. Earthquakes usually do not kill people. 
the missile terrorists. How can you say that? All earthquakes have got tens, hundreds, and thousands of people killed. Yeah, but that's not because of the earthquake itself. Unless you happen to be standing directly above the ground where the earth is opening up, the odds on you getting hurt by that earthquake is very, very slim. What kills people is the damage associated with the earthquake, meaning when the earthquake hits and the crust moves, all of the buildings that happen to be on top of the Earth's crust, when the earthquake hits, those buildings are going to collapse. And if you happen to be standing underneath one of those buildings when it collapsed, well, I'll tell you what, that's going to ruin your day real quick. That's the reason why buildings are now being built with earthquake-resistant technology. They can either be built on the series of hydraulic springs, meaning that instead of building the building directly into the bedrock, they build it onto these springs so that when an earthquake hits, these springs are going to go rocking and rolling. Now, if you happen to be in the building when that earthquake hits, it's going to scare everything out of you. But nonetheless, you're going to be relatively safe because that building is going to rock and roll, but it's not going to fall over. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. That's exactly the idea behind that. Or if the building is already built, as you can see over there, they can do all sorts of retrofitting, meaning that they're going to reinforce the building from the outside as well as from the inside, making it very difficult for that building to fall over. Like you see over there, they can also do the same thing with highways. They can retrofit the highway so that they're going to put it on hydraulic springs so that the odds on that highway collapsing are going to be a lot less. Take a look at an earthquake in Iran in the year 2019. Look at the damage that was created by that. Why was there so much damage? Because Iran has virtually zero earthquake technology. Now, why is it in a place like Iran they have very little earthquake technology, whereas in other parts of the world we've got lots of retrofitting and really good earthquake technology? The answer is simple, money. To build a building that's earthquake resistant or to retrofit it requires money. The end result is the vast majority of third world nations, when they get hit with an earthquake, the death toll is much greater than if it's going to hit an area like Japan, parts of China, or the United States. Take a look over here, folks, okay? Two earthquakes that were roughly the same. In 1989, you've got that World Series earthquake that we were talking about in the last session. That was a 6.9 on the Richter scale. 63 people died as a result of that. Now let's take a look at Haiti years later. The earthquake was just about the same. Instead of a 6.9, it was a 7.0. But look at the difference in damage. Over there, going back to the World Series earthquake, most of the deaths had occurred on the highway when parts of the highway that had not been retrofitted collapsed and killed people that were in cars over there. Take a look at Haiti. Over a quarter of a million people died as a result of that because look at those buildings. Those buildings just collapsed in on themselves. They had no retrofit technology. Why? The United States is a wealthy nation, Haiti is a very poor nation, therefore the buildings are going to remain the same. That's the reason why retrofitting a building is so very, very important. You can either retrofit a building by doing what you see over there, and if you don't do it, then what you're seeing over here is going to be the end result. The area um, up top with the trees, that area has been retrofitted. The other area was not retrofitted. Both of those are in California. So we can change the impact that the earthquake is going to have, but the one thing that we cannot change is the fact that earthquakes are going to happen. How are they going to happen? Because just as Dr. Vegan has said in 1912, wherever the plates meet, that's where the motion of the Earth's crust is going to change. That will generate the earthquakes, the volcanoes, and the tsunamis that are associated with the movement of the Earth's crust. Nature is going to do what nature is going to do. The best that we could hope to do is get ourselves prepared for when that actually happens. That's it on earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis. Oh my! I don't know what's coming up, but I hope you enjoy it, guys. Bye now.